What's up guys? Boy, if you fox it's me here today. I'm going to be doing my first ever creepypasta narration. This is um this is an all new thing for me. Um I have really never uh, narrated a creepypasta before. I mean, I I love listening to them, but I never narrated one myself. And uh, because of that, this is going to be an all new experience for me. And I don't know how it's going to work out. I chose a pretty short story so we could keep it within 15 minutes, but, um, but other than that, uh, let's see how it works out. So without further ado, let's get right into this, shall we? Let's go! My First Nightmare by James Chaos When I was younger, I attempted to learn how to lucid dream. Lucid dreaming is where you can take control of your dreams if it's not going the direction you like. I always heard it was dangerous, but never understood what could be so dangerous about controlling my dreams. That is, until I did. You see, we sw sleep for more reasons than to just recharge our minds. We need sleep because we are connected to more than we know. There are things in the world we can understand, and to attempt to, is psychosis inducing. I was 13, and I heard that you could dream about what you wanted and almost live in your dreams. That sounded extraordinary to my young, fragile mind. I got books from the local library, started writing in journals about my dreams, I went as far as even drawing layers on my hands so that I could have a reality check. Also, I could control my dreams. Everything was great, going great for several months. I was slowly understanding what my mind, when my mind was in a dream state, and had my reality check if I ever got lost. What happened next happened so fast that parts are a bit fuzzy, but I will do my best to make it tangible as possible. We need sleep, and we need to disconnect from the real world. Not doing so invites what I have come to refer to as sleepers. These sleepers, for lack of a better term, are demons that prey on those who don't sleep or disconnect. They are, in essence, parasites who feed on the mind. One night, after months of writing down my dreams and drawing layers on my hand, I had begun to notice I had control, albeit minor control, of my dreams. I would tell myself when to walk, or when to run, even fly if I wanted. There, then I began to notice dark shadows in the background of my dreams. I would then tell myself to make them go away, and usually they would, but not always. As I started getting more control, I these shadows would get larger or closer to me in my dreams. Because I was able to control my dreams now, I would just run as fast or I could just fly away from them. They went away for a short time, and I was in full control of my dreamscape, and I could be whoever I wanted, and go wherever I wanted. Then, I saw one of these shadows. I did what I had always done, and turned around and flew away, but when I did, it followed. Even in my sleep, I could feel my heart spike as I began to fear the worst. This was a nightmare, and no matter how much I tried, I couldn't control anything I, like I could a normal dream. In my books that I read, they have mentioned stuff like this happening, and to just wake up if you can't control it anymore. I sat bolt up in my bed, heart racing, and a beard beat of sweat pouring down my forehead. My first nightmare. I lay in the bed for what seemed like a lifetime, waiting for my parents to come tell me that I was not to get ready for school. I also knew that I had to write this down in my dream journal, but I couldn't. Reliving that moment, even to write, was hard. I went to school exhausted as if I had not slept, the vision of the shadow still behind me in the forefront of my mind. When I got home from school, I did not do what I usually did. I was too tired. The night, being as exhausted as I was, I went right to sleep. I didn't make 
any attempt to control my dreams at that night. A few days go by and I can feel confident about who's dreaming again. I hadn't had a nightmare again. Weeks went with no signs of the shadows in my dreams, whether I was lucid or not. Then, like before, I would see shadows in the background again. I got more books to see if I could understand what I was seeing, but no mention of these shadows ever came up in the books I had. I began to ignore them. Eventually, I either ignored them enough, or they just went away because I didn't see them in my dreams for months. I don't know what it was, um, because I was particularly tired, or what, but one night, I went to bed, and for the most part, I didn't even dream, except one flash. It was all white, and all of a sudden, this shadow appeared, right in my face. I again sat up, heart racing, and sweat, and this is when everything began to fall apart. That night is a divide in my mind. The moment when everything changed, and I was no longer the same person I had been. As I sat there in my bed, looking around the room, the shadows seemed almost alive. As if there was a creature hiding in the darkness, just beyond my sight. And that's when I noticed the face in the shadows. But only sometimes, as if they forgot to hide themselves when they looked at them. Sleep was no better. In fact, it was worse. No matter how hard I tried, I could not get rid of the shadows in my dreams. Always there. Always watching. The twisting, shadowy face of what I began to call sleep. This went on for about a year, and in that year, I pretty much got used to them being in the shadows of everywhere I looked, sleeping or awake. They didn't bother me anymore, they just watched. With eyes you could either not focus on, and faces that seemed to be perpetually floating, for lack of a better term. One night, I got especially brave and decided I would confront the sleeper in my dreams. I felt that since I was dreaming, if anything happened, I could just force myself to wake up, and everything would be okay, right? But I was very wrong. As I confronted the shadow, I began to get cold, as if the covers were being taken away from me in the real world. I got up to the creature and began to engage with it. The noise that came from it was nothing I could have ever imagined. It was as if everyone I knew was screaming in agony and begging for the pain to stop. I tried to wake up, but nothing. I knew I was dreaming. I remember going to bed, but looking down, the R I drew looked normal. I wasn't sleeping, but I remember going to bed, right? When the scream stopped again, I, oh, I again looked at my hand, and the reality check I did this time worked. I woke up, or so I thought. The creature was still there, in my face, mouth wide in agony, eyes that were, that were both there and not, a face flowing smoke, only this time in my room. I screamed, but my parents came in, and that's when I noticed the covers were pulled off of me, as pulled out from under them. I was flowing about four feet above my bed. I knew this because... When my parents came in, I fell back down. The shadow dissipated into the darkness and the room as if hiding. The next days are a bit fuzzy, as I didn't sleep. My parents decided it was time for me to see someone. As if seeing me floating in the air was somehow tied to the seeming mental issue I had. I had begun to go see a psychiatrist once a week. We talked about me not sleeping and how I had nightmares of the shadow creatures. As I noticed with dissociative personality disorder. Because I made the mere mention of lucid dreaming and the desire to escape reality. No matter the term used, it did not help. I still saw the sleepers, and I still could not sleep. When the psychiatrist noticed the sessions were not working well enough, I was prescribed sleep aid that was to be taken if before I go to bed and helped me fall asleep and stay asleep. This ended up poorly for everyone involved. The first time I took the sleep aid, I fell asleep faster than I ever had. I, it was almost welcomed. That was until they noticed me in their world again. 
this time with no escape. That night, I do not know what truly happened. I can only tell you what others tell me. All I can remember is darkness and power. The power I felt was almost electrifying. The next morning, I woke up in my living room. I must have slept there. I remember my parents both sobbing on the couch. I then saw what was causing this. Apparently, in my sleep, I carved symbols into my arms, dozens of them, and I recognized the symbols. They were symbols that I used as reality checks when lucid was dreaming. My parents tell me that they heard me downstairs and figured it was another sleepless night despite the sleep aid. When they came down, I had a razor carving these symbols into my arms. What transpired over the next two days was terrifying. The sleeper seemed to be getting bolder as if it taunted me. I gave in and screamed, what do you want from me? Not fully expecting an answer. They said, you. I felt it more than I heard it. I felt the moment the sleeper took over. It felt the cold wash into me as if it was an old friend coming back home. I felt dark, distant, as if the world I knew was just a mere shadow of who I was. Then, hungry, I felt hungry. Not the hunger when you haven't eaten dinner yet. Oh no. The hunger when you have never eaten. Or that's what it seemed. I knew what I wanted and I had the power to do so. My parents never stood a chance. I was in their dreams, even before I knew what I was doing. I was devouring their happiness as if it was candy, and I could have as much as I wanted. I watched them become the husks of their former selves, and reveled in what I had done. That will show them not to believe me, as I would say I see shadow creatures in my sleep. It wasn't enough. I need... I need more. The hunger was worse now. It was painful. I tried to feed on my parents again, but there was nothing left. I devoured every bit of happiness they had. I needed more. I quickly, quickly learned I could walk through the dream world, much like lucid dreaming, except now everyone I saw was food. I devoured the entire neighborhood in days, and my hunger was still not satiated. I wonder if it will, I wonder if it ever will be. As it began to reach out further, I had to find more happiness, everything began to fall apart. The world I knew was crumbling away. With every step I took, I could feel the world melting beneath my feet. Tears began to form, and I could see something familiar yet distant, a fleeing memory of what I used to be. I wake, screaming, floating, a shadowy face writhing in pain as if hungry. Hunger. I fell back into my bed, the emptiness I feel, the despair, it all hits me. At once, that nightmare was it. I remember feasting on my parents' happiness. My parents decided it was time for me to see someone, as if seeing floating me, me floating in the air was somehow tied to a mental issue I had. I began to go to a psychiatrist once a week. We talked about me not sleeping and nightmarish shadows of the creatures. I could tell you the last time I was truly happy. I don't even know what happiness is anymore, except when I taste it every night in my nightmare. Guys, go check out uh, James Chaos on No Sleep. He is an amazing author. Great job on the story, and and honestly, I cannot wait to read more of his works. This is my first ever narration I did, and I think it worked out pretty well. Um, so, uh, thank you guys for watching the first ever Creepypasta narration by Foxcast Media. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, I'll see you guys next time!